This is Erica Bellman, and you're listening to Her Digital Empire. Hello, everybody. So we're going to get started in just a minute. I'm just going to wait for Libby to jump on. Hey! Hi, good morning. Good morning. I'm so excited to do this with you today. I know, me too. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I'll go ahead and get started really quickly. I'm just going to go through my intro and sure. I'll introduce you and then I'm just going to just going to ask you a question. Sure. <laughs> um, so guys, really quickly, this is uh, Boss Bay Digital Lab. I, this is my beauty business breakdown. Uh, this is a Facebook Live that's also going to be uh, turned into my podcast for Her Digital Empire. If you are not following Her Digital Empire, make sure that you're following that as well. Uh, we are on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, uh, Amazon Music, SoundCloud. So whatever you prefer to watch your pod or listen to your podcasts on, make sure that you're listening there. Um, also, don't forget to follow Her Digital Empire and Boss Bay Digital Lab on Instagram. So again, this is our beauty biz breakdown. This is where I'm grabbing leaders in the industry to ask them questions to really help you all in, in you know, your businesses and life since uh, you all do uh, own your own beauty businesses and it's just phenomenal. You know, what's amazing about Libby, she's actually local, which is Yay! super cool. <laughs> yeah, when I was, it's so funny when I was checking out um, your portfolio, I was like, oh my God, Pacific Minute Magazine. Oh my gosh, I, I like, I recognize so much. I thought it was so cool. Yay. I know, it's awesome that we're in the same city. <laughs> we'll have to definitely get together. Absolutely. Um, and, and you know, what's crazy is that you're, you're award-winning, so you know, you're super knowledgeable. Uh, Libby is a, an award-winning esthetician. She's super knowledgeable. Um, she's gonna be spilling a ton of her success secrets, uh, including uh, her success with Groupon, which is, you know, kind of one of those things that, that all of us are, you know, we've either heard, is it like a bad thing to use or um, we just haven't had success with it, you know, or we have our own reasons. So that's super exciting as well. Um, and on top of that, the fact that she's worked with some amazing celebrities that I'm going to be asking about as well during this. So um, Libby, thank you so much for being on here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Yeah, I love using this platform to reach um, you know, new people in the industry, people in beauty school, seasoned people, um, you know, it's really important because a lot of girls are trying to jump from, and men are trying to jump from working for like a chain and they want to start yes. their own business. So I'm happy to spill the secrets because, well, the main reason is when I first started 20 years ago, there was no Google or Yelp or anything. So you went to beauty school and then you hopefully got hired and then you got trained by the product lines. but. Like, no one was teaching Brazilians back then, really. There was, like, um, one person, Lori Nestor. And I actually, the only re the only way you could really train with her was when you, if you went to San Francisco, where she is, which she's still at. She's amazing. She's, like, one of the original wax queens. Um, or you went to a trade show. And so that's one of the things I did. And I was a model. And in front of 200 people, this is before cell phones, thank God, um, <laughs> I got a bikini wax in front of, with my legs, like, the whole thing. Um, and that's what you did, or you would beg a seasoned esthetician to teach you how to do Brazilians. So that's what I did. And um, the lead esthetician at my first job said to me, <clears throat> mind you, I, this is like such an important thing. Um, she said, Libby, when you're teaching someone, you always want to hold a little something back. Like you don't want to tell all your secrets. And I was like, sure. what? And I was like, but that little secret could help me. So that has like stuck through me and, and that unfortunately that scenario has played out at other places where I've worked. You know, it's like, it's like if you're a chef or a cook and you're making pancakes and you need that one ingredient to make it work like the, like the salt or whatever. And so I could never hold back. I never wanted to hold anything back. And so thankfully now we have a lot of people that will share their secrets, but you know, a lot of times people will leave that one little secret ingredient back and Groupon has been, part of that for me because no one and I know we're going to talk about that but yeah um, yeah so that's my deal <laughs> yeah no it's amazing you know it's something that I wanted to actually start with because something um you had stated to me you know and I actually it, it's this is true you know so many estheticians only last so many years and you've been doing this for almost 20 years like what is it that made you stick with it oh god it's the only thing I'm good at really and that really calls to me um 
so yeah, I mean, I just love the industry. I love people. I love hairstylists, love, love, love working with hairstylists. Um, the first 10 years of my career, I worked in a big salon spa that had like 20 hairstylists who were constantly, you know, collaborating and doing new segments and just having fun and going to training. So I'm, I really, really like, um, and I just love the industry. I actually come from a family of hairstylists on my mom's side. My grandma was a hairstylist and my aunt was oh, a hairstylist. Okay. Um, they're sort of the creative side. And then the, the brains is on my dad's side. They're all doctors and pharmacists and stuff. So I got the creative side. Sorry, parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with creativity. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. That's awesome. Um, so let's get into like what everybody really wants to know. So I, like I was saying earlier, I totally, you know, recognize a ton of your work on Pacific Magazine. Um, you know, the, the celebrity, you were talking about Coach Crystal, who, yeah. you know, is like huge in the bash world. Yeah. I am like a batch. I love the bachelor. Oh, me too. <laughs> Bachelorette. So um, uh, tell me about her. So like, what was that like? So this was when... Um... Coach Crystal had done, she was in the middle of doing The Bachelor. And so she came to my work to get a, a facial. And I had known her because I had taken her class at Orange Theory Fitness. And my friends, like, knew of her. But, you know, she's, like, in the middle of doing the show. You know, and you're not supposed to ask them about the show. And, like, you know, you know what to. And people always ask me, like, do you get nervous working on, you know, celebrities? And, like, most makeup artists would be like, oh, no, no. I don't get nervous. Bullshit. You're always nervous because you don't want to fuck up, okay? You right. don't want to put something on their skin that they have a reaction to. You don't want to, you know, there's just so many things that can go wrong. So I was like, <laughs> sort of, sort of, sort of nervous, you know? She has super nice, beautiful skin, taller in person, like all the things you hear about celebrities. Just like super, totally normal. But her body is amazing. Of course. Her <laughs> arms, I mean, like, just like what you see, like, on, you know, like, TV and film and her videos and stuff. She's a super down to earth girl. Like, you know, she had a really hard life. Like growing up, she didn't have anything handed to her and she's made this, she's done everything herself, you yeah. know? Um, and I think there's like a lot, you know, and so yeah, she's super down. She's super cool. And like her body is beautiful. Yeah. 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 And you know, an even bigger one that, that you've worked with is, is uh, Clint Eastwood's son, Scott, right? Yes. So Scott Eastwood's probably one of the biggest, like, younger celebrities that I've done makeup yeah. on. Um, and people always ask me, like, what it's like to work on him. Um, so first of all, once again, everyone was nervous, excited, nervous, but everyone was nervous because this is like Clint Eastwood's son. Um, you don't want to screw up. You know, you want to get the, you want to get a shot that he likes and that the advertisers like, and you want to keep, you know, there's a lot of people to keep happy. Um, we didn't have a, it was a last minute shoot, which happens all the time in this industry. Things are last minute. You've got to be ready to go. Um, and we were shooting without a permit in La Jolla. So we had to be like undercover because we were, you know, scouting locations. We shot outside, which meant that we had the clothes rack outside. That means right. it was changing outside. I mean, like, you don't want to stare at Scott Eastwood while he's changing, but dear <laughs> God, that one has a beautiful body also. So, you know, you're trying to like, but you know what? He's also just suit, kind of quiet, conservative. He, look, he sounds really? just like his dad. He's got this like beautiful, raspy voice, doesn't talk a lot. You know, when you're, when you're a makeup artist or hairstylist on any kind of set, like you, you there's a lot of rules. Like you just want to blend in with the wall. You do your job and you don't ask for something. Right. You know, you, you're just like, you're hired help. So, um, but yeah, he's beautiful and he's, um, he looks just like his dad. Super nice, just super quiet, just super normal. Um, but yeah, like we all were like super nervous to work on him. We wanted to get, you know, a shot that everyone liked, but yeah, that's, it's a, it's a fun, it's kind of a fun memory to, for me to think of. Cause there's, when you're shooting like that, there's so many other things going on. Like we've got the weather and we don't have a permit and like, there's all these other things and then you have to do your job and you know, I've never do worked you, on it. You know, comparing like, cause I know that, uh, especially I'm sure a lot of listeners and, and viewers on this right now are going to say, you know, well, working with celebrities, like is my dream. That's my goal. That's what I'm working for. You know, um, if you were to choose working with celebrities like you have been or working with like the everyday, which one is, is more comfortable for you? Cause it sounds like the celebrity stuff is like, there's just so many variables, right? Yeah. I mean, working with celebrities is a lot harder than people think. Um, and, um, you, you're, you have to please a lot of fucking people when you're working with celebrities. Not the stuff that I do. The stuff that I do is like low on the totem tool that I have friends that, you know, work on, like my mentor works 
um, James Vincent has worked on everyone from Lady Gaga to Barack Obama. So I have my mentor and the people that I take classes with work on huge, huge celebrities. Um, but it's you're managing a lot of different things. And yeah. um, it's really hard to get to that place where you're like just Lady Gaga's makeup artist, you know? Um, but I mean, if that's what interests you, it's um, my favorite thing to work on um, is my clientele that I have right now, which I love and adore. Um, but I, in the t in like the makeup world, I love working on newscasters. Newscasters? I, yeah. Okay. I like news. It's super fun. Um, newscasters are, I've done a lot in, in San Diego. They're super real. The news never stops. It's super exciting. So to make a world, but yeah, I don't, um, I, I'll do a few TV and film projects here and there. Um, I'm working on a web series right now, but yeah, um, I kind of like just the average. Just the average day-to-day. Yeah, -day. Less yeah. stressful, maybe. Less, oh yeah, um, definitely. Thinking, right? Um, well, you still want to please them because whoever's in my chair or my room is like signing my check for that hour or whatever. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's not glamorous at all. Like it's long days. I did a video last year and we literally shot for 16 hours. Oh, wow. 16 wow. hours. That's my longest day ever. Um, and it was crazy. a great video, super fun, but it's really hard work and you really got to know what you're doing. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's not just like you go take a class and you get a certificate and you're like, Whoa, okay. Like, I've got this. It says I know what I'm doing. Like, yeah. Right, right. Well, you know, that's crazy. Yeah, because, um, like, even as a graphic designer, you know, I've had my my celebrities, my influencers. And then, like you were saying, like, if I were to choose, I would, any day, I would choose the just, you know, average business owner over, yeah. like, a big name. Because there's just so many other variables. There's you know, the, even the personalities sometimes aren't great, yeah. you know, so, um, but it sounds like you've had really good experiences. Oh, yourself. no, I've had horrible ones, too. One day I did a, a week on um, a reality show, I'll, I won't name it, um, and I was setting up, and I was going to be with this team for a week traveling all over Southern California. <clears throat> the director walks in, female, assistant director walks in, walk right past me, and setting all my stuff up, and I don't even get a good morning. I mean, it's like, it's a different animal. And I don't, yeah, that whole celebrity world can be really, really bitchy. I mean, so can oh, the yeah. world, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'll, I'll just take my, I'll just take my clientele that I have right here. And then the occasional uh, TV or film project with people that I know it's not going to be, like you said, like, there's just like so much ego and like, you know, everyone thinks they're Mariah Carey and we've got this everyone. entourage a lot of times. <laughs> you got to please them and like, no, you know, so yeah, it's tough. Yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I think like being down here in Southern California, it's a lot easier to kind of get in those situations, you know, compared right. to if you're somebody out in Detroit or something, which I mean, I know there's celebrities everywhere, but especially now with the influencers, the influencers are just like a whole different level of like, you know, the right. ego versus, you know, the star and stuff. And so I know that, you know, a lot of my viewers, um, they bring up influencers a lot, you know, and paying influencers. And if it's going to, you know, like, like as a makeup artist, would you ever uh, pay like an influencer to maybe do their makeup or something to push your portfolio? Do you think that's something that is like important or in your I don't think that really works anymore. I think it might have done at the beginning of Instagram, you know, like, if Kim Kardashian shouted you out, like at the beginning of your career, yeah, that was gonna help you. But like, um, and, you know, getting to that level is, like, extremely hard. Um, and, um, but, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I wouldn't waste your money because if no one knows who you are anyway, they're, they're following that They're following that star. They don't care who we are. I mean, honestly, like, I wouldn't waste your money and your yeah. time and your energy. And a lot of um, people that are influencers, they just want stuff for free. And, um, you know we have bills to pay too. So it looks real fun while everything that we do, but it's not a hobby, it's a job. And so I think people have to remember that. I think that's what, yeah, people need to realize. Like it's, it's funny cause you think like, oh, you know, if I work with a celebrity, I'll have made it. And you know, it's like these pedestals that I see so many business owners set for themselves and they don't recognize or realize like, you don't have to make full, you don't have to work with celebrities to make full-time income and be successful. And, you know, and maybe it's not even for you, like you were saying, there's just, are you willing to deal with the ego, right? Well, and it's like a lot of people, like, I mean, I've done a lot of celebrities, but I've done them one time or two times. It's not like, you know, unless you are like 
Lady Gaga's personal makeup artist, like you're probably hustling a couple other jobs. So um, yeah, it's just because I mean, just because I worked on Scott Eastwood doesn't mean anything really. I mean, I have him right, right there, but like, did that, I mean, to be perfectly honest, did that do a whole lot for my career? No, not really. I mean, it's, it's a fun story to tell and I love the photos, but did that propel me into anything um, amazing? No. I mean, for some people it might, but, um, but I wouldn't count on that definitely at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my, that's actually, we like align on that opinion because so many people, uh, like I said, with the influencers, with the celebrities and stuff, that is just like, it's so big now with Instagram. And, um, I just think that people to put too much weight on it, you know, oh, definitely, yeah. um, which is actually why I wanted to get into my next question with you, which is, um, you know, quitting your corporate job and going and just starting your own business because you couldn't take any of your clients, right? Yeah, so I worked for a salon <clears throat> for about eight years, and I had a full clientele, and then I was doing my makeup gig on the time, on the side, but anyone that does makeup knows it's like feast or famine. Like, one month you can be making a lot of money, and then the next month you, you know you're doing nothing. So I had two jobs all these years, and then um, it just got to the point where I was doing like 20 clients a day for this job, and I was exhausted. I mean, sure. mentally, physically, I would come home, I'd lay on the couch, and I would just be like, and, and mind you, I'm making, like, no money. And when I mean no, mean no money, I mean, like, I'm making minimum wage plus 20%. Like, I'm making these people, like, hundreds of dollars a day, like, I don't know, eight to $1,000 a day between selling retail, and then I'm taking very little of that home, and I mean, <clears throat> I live in San Diego, and I'm a kick-ass esthetician, and so they're just, I just started looking at my girlfriend's careers that had left and started with zero clients. And I started, you know, coaching with my esthetician friends in town. And I'm like, I gotta just try this. I never really wanted to go on my own. I like working with the team. I never wanted to be alone in a room like this before, but I just was like, I'm worth more than this. Um, and there was like a lot of like, trying times with this particular company because <clears throat> they were just like it was just like a revolving door it was like turn and burn it was like you had 15 minutes to do brazilians and like i don't think you get an award for being the fastest 15 brazilian. minutes for yeah. a brazilian jesus yeah <laughs> um i don't think you get like an award for being the quickest um brazilian sure. i had so many clients at this at this um job that i couldn't even remember their names like i would recognize them because i couldn't remember like their bodies but i couldn't remember their names right and i was just exhausted and i wasn't proud of the work i was doing because i was so rushed and then when you're rushed that's when you make mistakes right you leave hair you bruise people you do all kinds of things and that's not the kind of work i wanted to do and i felt like i was in <clears throat> and i'm going to use this loosely but i felt like i was in an abusive relationship with this particular work because um you know you would do out of a thousand people you'd have one complaint and they would come down so hard on you on that one complaint like leaving hair or bruising something or something um and um I felt like I was in an abusive relationship. Like it was really, really hard to get out of. Um, my first year was really, really hard just because I've had massive success early on. Doesn't mean it wasn't, um, wasn't difficult. And that's like why I train people now and I coach people and I do a zoom class. It's going to be um, an online class soon because I don't want girls to go through what I did. I put up with a lot of crap. Um, I, now I look back on my career and I'm like, God, I can't believe I didn't say something. I can't believe I did you know, services that are that are really against the law. Like, there's all kinds of things that I look back on now. Um, and that's only because, like, I've surrounded myself with the right people in the right place. And I'm not constantly having someone tell me, like, too much makeup, not enough makeup, your hair's too frizzy, you need better bras. Like, just, like, the kinds of things verbally that were said to me. Um, yeah, it just sort of, like, ate to me after a while. And I was like, I got to go. I got to make this happen. Let's go. Yeah. So it was, like, one step at a time. I made a lot of mistakes. But like, I wouldn't trade it. Um, but I, that's one reason like why I started my, my Facebook group called um, The Secrets of Estheticians for Beauty right. Creatives. Um, and it's not just for estheticians, it's for makeup artists, hairstylists, um, beauty school students. Um, and it's to share like the secrets, you know, that people don't want to tell you. So you can jump through those hoops because I didn't have anyone teaching me to jump through those hoops for a long time. Um, yeah, did I answer your question? Sorry, I went off on a tangent. <laughs> no, it's good. I just, um, you know, I'm curious. So, like, because that's such a big jump. And it's actually kind of, um, it's almost like 
so like my story is very similar too. almost unrelatable because I a month into do working on I, I'm a full time uh, graphic designer and a lot of my business came from Etsy I started on Etsy and I actually quit my job after one month of being on Etsy and I was not making a full time income and it's kind of like a very like unrelatable uh, story but I just kind of like, you know, just I just cross line and I said that's it I just can't handle it anymore for you you know going from saying like I'm just gonna give up all these people and all this money that I know that I'm getting and I'm just gonna start my own business and it's kind of like it's not even a you know the typical advice is well keep working your job build your stuff on the side and then when you have enough you know make your own and yours is very very similar to mine where you just said that's it I can't do this anymore and so I'm curious you know do you recommend that do you No. okay <laughs> That's why I teach people now how to do it better than me. So yeah, um, no. So I, <clears throat> no, I made so many mistakes. Like, so I kept my spa job, but I didn't tell any of my clients. And so I worked for them for three days. And then I worked for myself for three days. And I did that for eight months. So, <clears throat> but I, um, I was exhausted, but yeah, like I had no clients. So, you know, it was like, I did all the things. Like I posted on the groups and I begged my friends and family, not my family. I have one family member here, my sister. I begged my, you know, not begged, but it was like, come in, you know, I'm so this, I'm blah, 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 specials, this, that. Um, and um, I do not, I mean, I did everything back. I did everything. And you'll see this from like a lot of girls in my industry. No, I had no business plan. I was like, business plan, what? I got an extra thousand dollars. I'm just going to like start. I'm just going to start. But if you wait till you have all those things like in line, like you'll never do it. You know, right. So, but I do suggest coaching with people that know what they're doing ahead of you because it makes it a lot easier. And then I would have made less mistakes in the beginning, but I don't regret going on my own. I wish I'd done it sooner, but I sort of don't regret the timing of my life because I do believe that wherever you are is where you're supposed to be, which is like, you know, wherever you are is where you're supposed to be. But I do believe that, but I do believe that you can make, you know, you can, make you can make choices and lead up you know like you can get your website together you can get your graphic you know you can get your logo together you can get things all in place so that when you are ready to do that you have things more lined up and it's easier for you so um, like the estheticians the uh you know we have a lot of hair suppliers girls who, who sell hair extensions we have so many um lash technicians and you know everybody's so similar in in your opinion you know don't just jump in and say i'm gonna quit my job and you know find my clients you want to find a mentor yeah. right yeah definitely you want to find someone that's doing way better than you um and then um you know coach with them take classes with them that's the my best advice because they will save you time and money it's like when you get married and you hire a wedding planner you know the wedding planner knows sure. all the ins and outs like she's gonna tell you go here here and here not here here that's what people like me and and like you do you know for people that have already done it um and then you don't waste your time and like your money and so i coached with a lot of esthetician friends before like during while i was doing it um but i did work two jobs so there is a way to do it um for hair people and skin people where <clears throat> you take massive action but you rent a place one day a week you want a place two days a week you keep that job over there and then then you're not as nervous because you still have money coming in because even if you have amazing skills like me it's still going to take time and then that's another thing is you know your skills have to be really really good you can't just come out of esthetician school and be like okay well i'm a master esthetician like where's my job like not everyone's samantha boda that you know the dallas esthetician she did her homework she did her work so and nothing replaces experience so you have to do that and then you have to look at your work too and be like well if people aren't rebooking why you know everyone's like Oh, well, group on people are cheap. Group on people don't do this. Group on people like that. And I'm here to tell you, if your work is good, if your work is great, you're going to build a clientele. It's not going to happen in one week, but you're going to build it, you know? So you have to take your ego out of it and be like, hmm, maybe I do need to take that waxing class. Maybe I do need to take that facial class. Maybe like my, you know, my lashes aren't that great. So those are the kinds of things. And it's hard. Like, I mean, I had been an esthetician for 10 years and my focus before was facials. And then I went to this place where it was all Brazilians and like, I had to retrain and I'm constantly yeah. learning new things, you know? I'm sure it's hard because, you know, you're still an artist. You're, this is your art, you know? And even for me, I recall being, 
sensitive when somebody didn't like my work, mm -hmm. right? Like if like yeah. I did a flyer or something and it wasn't good, um, or they didn't think it was good, it was it was I got sensitive about it, and I, because it's your it's your stuff, you put your all into it. So right. it doesn't matter if you're waxing or you're you know you're you're doing brows or whatever the heck you're doing it's still your work so i can imagine it is but we have to we have to remember that the client is our boss so we want to make our boss happy even if they're only here for one flyer or they're here for one bikini wax like we got to make them happy and then we also have to educate them right on like what's possible and i think just all that communication and learning how to do that and managing expectations will help that because a lot of times um it's a lot of miscommunication at least on my end you know of you know sure. I have to explain to people. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of your success came from staying humble and just, you know, working and learning and working and learning and applying what you learn and then doing it again. Yeah, I mean, when let's see, in 2014, I took Kelly Baker's class. She's one of my friends now and one of my um, mentors. And um, I had been an esthetician for, God, I don't know, 13 years or something, more than Kelly. And everyone's like, why are you taking? Can't beat this class. Why are you spending five hundred dollars? And that's all. Um, well, when you join the basketball team and the NBA team, you don't you don't train less. You train more. And I was like, my brows a don't look like Kelly's. I'm not charging. I think eventually she charged like seventy five. She charges one hundred and fifty. I'm not charging one hundred and fifty one hundred and fifty dollars for eyebrows. Um, I love everything about her. And I want to be like her in this world. So yeah, I'm gonna, if I can get time with her and see her little secrets, I'm going. It was one of the best things I ever did. And now I'm a whole part of Kelly Baker's tribe, you know? And yeah. um, people still think I was crazy for doing that. And I'm like, well, Kelly's one of the reasons why I'm at where I'm at, because she's so empowering. And she teaches you so much in her classes that's not about waxing. And that's the only way I can explain it. <clears throat> when you train with someone that's like way way ahead. you want to be the worst person in the room it's like when you take a dance class you don't want to be the best dancer you want to be the worst dancer so you can learn from the best dancer it's the same thing in our world like i want to be the worst esthetician i've done that before i spent a week with the powder group back east i was probably the worst makeup artist in the room for that week when i when i left at the end of that week i was way way better i was humbled i was way way better and you know that's the only way the only way you get better is by training with people that are better than you Absolutely. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room, right? Exactly. Same thing with art, you know, any industry. Yeah, I 100% I, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. I, I absolutely do. Um, and then speaking of all that, you know, you brought it up a few times. So let's like dive into what everybody wants to know, which is, so in your transition, um, you know, using Groupon, was that something that you used like as an intro for clients and stuff? And did you deal with a lot of clients who maybe wanted you to like match that pricing after? No, actually, my Groupon experience has been really, really, really good. Um, yeah, this is the thing. You can pay for Google ads. You can pay for Facebook ads. You can pay for people to do all of the SEO and stuff. And if you add that up, you're still going to be paying money that's going to take away from your service, right? So Groupon is, Groupon is free. They don't take anything until you take your money. So you're getting a client that wants this service. So it is your job when they come in to wow them with how amazing you are so that they rebook. So I have like a whole system that I teach girls. One of the most important things is, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Groupons are first time clients only, thank you, okay? Sure. You want a Groupon deal, and I know we're running out of time so I wanna try and get these out quickly. You want a Groupon deal that gives them a taste of what you are, not the whole the, not the whole pie, so just a little bite of the pie. So let's say you're, um, let's say you're a lash girl. Okay, so maybe you offer just the flares so that you're not spending two hours doing your whole lash, your whole lash thing. So you want to give them a little taste, and you treat those Groupon clients like gold. They are a live active client that's already interested in your space. So use that, and use that for before and afters, and use that for. Um, reviews that you can post everywhere. Like there's so many things that people are missing the boat on this. They're just thinking about the right now. They're not thinking about down the line. And it's just, you know, you'll talk to estheticians and they'll tell you, um, some of them that are my friends that even work in, in solo with me, like they built massive, like I have massive clientele from Groupons and they're not cheap. Um, they're some of the nicest people. They're nurses and students and all people. They're, when people come to a new city, you know, where they, they don't know where to go. So they try people on Groupon. And uh, probably seven out of 10 of my people re come back and, you know, the people that don't come back, oh, well, but I did a client during that time 
and that I can I had an open space and maybe they're going to go tell the girl down the street oh my gosh I went to Libby she was amazing so people are just like super they don't think about the long term they're just like and you have to stick with it for a while like it's not going to happen in like one week you've got to stick with the program and so you know with that um you know do you feel like uh I guess one of the questions would be what well, you know does it would it bring in I know that clients can be nice, but would it bring in the clientele that typically wants a lower price or no, you, I mean, they no, just a deal. No, not really. Like I don't have, I am like <clears throat> once in a while I'll get someone that's like, Oh, can you, you know? And I'm like, no, I can't. I'm, you know, um, and people are usually really like, they, they understand that. And especially with what everything that's happened in our industry. I mean, we're closed right now. So people are pretty sensitive to what's going on. And then, a lot of people will call and be like, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm interested in your group on. Can I just pay you directly? Well, sure. Why not? Come on in. Oh, wow. Okay. All the time. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, and then, you know, because you're established now. So is this something that as an established business owner you recommend? Or is this just to kind of get your feet wet, you know, get off of the uh, off of the bottom? You know, you know it, depend it depends on the business. I mean, I have a girl that I work with at Sola down, the hill, down here. She's a six-figure esthetician. She's a kick-ass esthetician. And her deal is paused right now because she's so busy. But she'll mm -hmm. unpause it when she gets slow. Because unless you're Kelly Baker and you're booked out till next year and you have spots in your in your, in your day, like, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to do it. It's a live client. That it's a live lead that someone that or that wants to get the services that you offer. I mean, it's hard to get people in your space. So it depends on this. And you know, I mean, I've only been on my own since 2018. My group on still going. I have no shame in it. I have no ego in it. I have some. I built a huge clientele from it. Like I and I know people are cringing all over the makeup world hearing this, but like, if you use it to your advantage, it will work for you. <laughs> I'm curious about your, because like online, so online we call this kind of like a funnel and um, this would be called like a tripwire. So it's kind of a cheaper rate um, to kind of get people in the door and then you're able to sell them on something bigger right. uh, because they trust you. And I think what the Groupon does is in a way like the tripwire, it builds trust in the funnel. So for you, is your goal then when they walk through the door to get another appointment booked or what's your next step there? Yes, absolutely. To pre-book them for the next time. Um, absolutely. And then, you know, like you said, it's all about the trust. So usually you, may, you build trust for a lot of people on the third appointment. So, or the second appointment. So then it's, then you can go into the other services that you offer. I see. I see. Yeah. yeah I saw, you know, it's so funny. Every time I've, I've only used Groupon for a few things. I used to, as a kid in my twenties, I used to use it for, for dental work because, you know, you don't have health insurance as a kid and in your 20s and um i mean every time i would spend 40 bucks on a cleaning and i'm walking out having booked like 400 dollars worth of dental work yeah. that i needed you know and that wasn't a deal you know and so i saw it work really well for dentists and absolutely yeah yeah yeah, I mean, yeah. Like a plastic surgeon friend of mine he i don't know if he's doing it now he was doing it i mean at one time i saw that like the four seasons had a group on i'm like well, there's a, there's a program to this to make, like you said, to make this work. So you have to be open-minded to that, you know? And, you know, you'll be on these esthetician and hairstylist pages and people are like, don't discount your work. You're worth more. Well, right. Of course you're worth more. Of course you are. But no one knows who you are. But no one strategy. knows who you are. So it's like these girls rather give away free shit to their friends and their friends in the hopes that they're going to go out to their friends or get a live client. You know, you're, you're going to build your clientele strangers, not with your friends and family. We all know that, right? We all know that it's, that it's not your friends and family you build your business with. Right, right. Absolutely. You know, I 100% agree. I think, in my opinion, because, you know, for me, I actually do the same thing. So, like, I have different rates for different people. I have very cheap do-it-yourself products that don't even involve me, but I create anyway to make sure that there's value there. A lot of people say, don't do that. You should be doing $1,000 logos and stuff. Right. And I just like to meet people where they're at, you know, and have something for everybody. And it's funny because I've had a lot of people who say, hey, I used your DIY stuff in, for like 10 bucks, and now I'm ready for exactly. your, your expensive package I've been saving. And exactly. those are my favorite clients. The people yeah. who, like, when that money is saved and they've put that money, you know, it's like they're ready to go. And 
I do agree that, you know, it, it's funny because like I was like, I'm going to find some questions, you know, um, and get some questions from um, just like people, viewers and listeners and stuff. And a lot of people are very curious about Groupon. And I think it's because, you know, there's just, I mean, everybody's a coach nowadays. Everybody has oh. their opinions, you know, and it's yeah. like you said, the, the most com um, the most common opinion is, well, your work is worth more than yeah. blah, 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 you know, and um, <laughs> they're not realizing it's a funnel. It's a thing to get them through the door. Right. And you end up making a lot more money that way. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's going like to take a, a little bit of time, but like nothing is, nothing happens overnight. Kind of like a, a, a coupon, you know, in those coupon books, paying for a coupon, a restaurant would pay for a coupon in a coupon book. And sure, the person's getting 50% off their meal, but you've now gained a new customer and that's more important for them. Well, yeah. absolutely. And then they go out, and this happens all the time with me, and then they go out and tell three friends, oh, my God, Libby's amazing at her Brazilian. Yes, and then I get three friends from it. And so it's like, well, yeah. white, white girls this can, and men, this can work for you. You know, the trick is to not make it a service that's super long, costs you a lot of money. You, like I said, you, like, you want to give them, like, a bite of the pie. You don't want to give them the whole pie. The whole that's thing. what I think. Um, and then, yeah, like, same thing, like, with people um, in your industry, like, People will ask about a logo and I just like, okay, so I have a, I have a real logo now, but when I started, yeah, it was a, um, when I first started my makeup business, it was a Vistaprint logo and then my sister did it and then I had something else and then when I had the money, I hired a designer like you and like, I just kind of cringe when people are all, oh, I paid $5 for my logo, look at it and I'm just like, oh God. Like people but it's don't... the process. It's the process. Everybody starts somewhere and then so many people don't even know that they're yeah. supposed to buy like this this branding, you know, they're supposed to brand. So many people are just like, I'm excited for my business. And they, and these things are out there and they say, Oh, and then a lot of people are starting with, you know, not a lot of money. I mean, I can imagine starting your esthetician business. You're not making so much money out the door. Right. Um, so it's good to kind of like not drown yourself in debt. I don't believe in debt. I'm not, I hate debt. You know, <laughs> um, I don't believe in just bring on so many loans and things to get your uh -huh. business going. And then you're digging yourself out of that and the interest and everything and just start where you're at. That's what I think. Um, so I actually really agree with you. I think, I think Groupon is, is a good move for a lot of people. And the, the you know, the thing that people don't really think about, you're getting all that, all that advertising that Groupon does, all of the leads that Groupon gets, you're getting all of that. You're getting um, oh, all these eyes. It's free advertising, absolutely. not free because you're paying, you know, for your ad, but all so you, only, you only pay when the client comes in yeah oh okay yeah so you only pay when the client that's that's even better that's and then great. you can negotiate like a higher rate once you've gotten a certain amount and once you've sold a certain amount yeah that's just yeah. like etsy you know people even say to me like you know why do you you're, you're you're an etsy designer at that point if you're on etsy and i'm like are you kidding do you know how many people go to etsy every day like ah. <laughs> i would never give that up right. i don't care what it makes me look like <laughs> Yeah, but, and that's know. the thing, like, you have to do things that are, like, uncomfortable, like, as a business owner, like, everything isn't, like, always lined up perfectly, it's like, you wait for everything to be, like, lined up perfectly, you'll never do anything. Yeah, so if, if a client, um, you know, let's, let's say somebody who's listening right now, um, they, they're like, I'm in, I want to do this, you know, what is some tips, I guess, you could give them to, to get going on Groupon, anything that you wish you would have known that you didn't know? Um, we'll make sure your phone number is on the Groupon because people will call you and then they, you can book them directly. Treat them like gold. Um, make sure that you get it. This is my most thing. You know, you need to have this posted everywhere so that they know that it's first time clients only. Um, and the most important thing is to like really is to rebook them, you know, and don't think that just because they're Groupon client, they're just going to be a one and done. Like treat them like a real like you would a family member or a friend. Um, and then um, you don't like don't don't have a group on for a service like if your deluxe service is a red carpet facial that's two hours and it's normally you know let's say two hundred dollars don't put that give them just a little bite of the pie give them a 30 minute express facial and then upsell them and tell them why you need to tell them why they need what you what they want they have congestion they need extractions and you can add all these things on don't give it all away you just want to give a little bit of the taste of what you're all about okay great um so you know, really quickly. So, you know, we have so many listeners that are like struggling amid the pandemic, especially here in California, you know, yeah. um, have you ever struggled getting clients and you know, what was like that turning point that got you through that to get, to get back up? 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's why like I, I teach my classes now because it was hard starting from zero. And um, that's one reason why like I did the Groupon is because I had exhausted everything else. Actually, I started I started my business with the Groupon going, um, but I wasn't the one thing I wasn't doing really important. I went pre booking my people when they left. You have mm -hmm. to pre book people because they forget and it teaches your clients to rebook. And then I was like, God, I don't know what's going on. Mom might be on the phone with my mom. What's going on? I made a mistake. I should have stayed at my own lunch. I look for a job. Like all these things going through your head. And then I was like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? And then, you know, I, I, I was like, you're not pre-booking, Lydia. Like, you know what you're not doing. You know, it's hard when you're first starting out, you know, to pre-book and to do things. You know, estheticians and hairstylists, we're not like naturally salespeople. So we have to learn how to do these things. And I just thought back in all the training I have. And it's like, what am I not doing? And as soon as I started pre-booking people, that's when the magic started to happen. I was like, oh, mom, like, got 20 people this week and like we would like dance and every single time I'd like someone else would pre-book and like text my mom and like oh my god mom someone else booked and so like and then it was like and then you get your confidence back and then things just kind of start rolling and then like you're more comfortable and so you're happier at your work and then you know um you just can't give up it doesn't happen overnight but it will happen um yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. okay so pre-booking is a big big part of it just before that client leaves get them in a new appointment right, right. Absolutely. and that'll help solidify that income, right? Absolutely. Um, so if you had one piece of advice for somebody starting out brand new uh, in the industry today, right? Or this month, what would you say to that person? Um, I would join all the esthetician and Facebook groups because there's like, I mean, mine's amazing. Um, but there's people in there that will give you secrets, you know, tips, tricks, and you'll learn a lot from those groups and you can go back and read other threads and then you'll be like, oh, this is the equipment I should buy. Oh, I should do this. I shouldn't do that. You know, ask advice from people that have already done it. You know, don't ask people, don't ask like, you know, your boyfriend who's in tech, like, oh my God, why is my website? What's wrong with my website? He doesn't know he's in tech, you know, ask another esthetician, ask your hair says, ask someone that's, ask someone that's doing a lot better than you. Um, that's what I did. I went to my girls that had gone before me and I was, and they still help me to this day. Like I talk to them all the time and we constantly help each other. That's great. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, um, really quick too, because you've just been giving so much information. You're just so knowledgeable. Oh, thank um, you. I want everybody to be able to find you. So oh, yes. let's talk about your Facebook group. Um, do you offer coaching as well? Yes. Yes. I offer, um, our coaching sessions. Um, they can find me on, well, my Instagram is at Libby Lazarus, which is yes. the top there. I um, and through that there in my link, in my bio, there's a link to the, to join the secrets of estheticians, which is for, um, estheticians, hairstylists, makeup artists, and beauty school students. Um, and so the reason why I did that, because a lot of these groups are like, no, you got to have your license, put your license number in there. You know, I want your like only estheticians. And it's like, well, I want to reach that girl, you know, that's in the middle of nowhere. That's like, I hate what I'm doing. And maybe this is a good choice for me. And, may, you know, maybe if she sees other people doing what she does or that look like her, she can do it too. Um, so I let beauty school students and, you know, makeup artists in and other, other, um, you know, facets of the industry to try and help other people too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, great. So Facebook, Facebook and Instagram is where you can find Libby if, you know, she resonated with you and, um, you want to learn more. And I just think, you know, you, you touched on so many good points. I, I am a believer in Groupon especially if you're talking to you. <laughs> I know it works for some industries, but I was just like, well, I'm curious, you know, because yeah, there there's such things as low quality clients and you just don't want low quality clients. But you, you know? can get low quality clients anywhere. They can totally. pop in anywhere and you will get a certain that are just one and done, you know, but that's okay. Like as long as it's not taking a lot of time and it's not taking a lot of your materials, you know, mm -hmm. because the thing is they might not come back, but they might tell the girls out on Saturday night, you know, you just don't know. So it's a, it's like anything. It's like dating. It's like online dating. Like you got to swipe a lot, you know, you got to just do as many people as you can and do your best work. And, um, you know, if you're doing the other things like SEO and Facebook ads and all those other things, like that's costing you money too. So, mm -hmm. you know, 
there's a lot of different ways to go Absolutely. at it, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I 100% agree. Um, perfect. Well, I so appreciate you jumping on here. And Thanks for having me. chatting with all of us today. I will be posting this on um, our page as well as this will be a podcast episode for Her Digital Empire as well. So, um, you know, do not forget to follow Libby. Um, and do not forget to check out her Facebook group because that is like a super knowledgeable group. I just joined it as well. So it's like super lively. Everybody's chatting in there. I know. We need to do like a <laughs> segment, on, secret. segment on um, branding and marketing with you. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Well, yes. And, you know, for all you, you uh, graphic designers too, you know, it's smart. Get in the groups. Groups were how I started yeah. too. This is how I got my business. So uh, aside from Etsy as well. Um, but yeah, so just don't forget to subscribe to us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Mu uh, Amazon Music, SoundCloud, uh, Her Digital Empire on Instagram, and Boss Bay Digital Lab, where we post our beauty business breakdowns. So thank you so much, Libby, for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. All this. Yes. Um, and I, you know, we'll definitely probably be bringing you on again soon. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that. I'd love to have you when it's safe to come in here and. I know, like, so you, you, see, you know, in the same room. Yeah, crazy. definitely. <laughs> definitely. Okay, great. Great. Right. Well, have a super great rest of your day.